You heard the man. Hello again. No, welcome back to Dr. Toodles Cubasic Asylum. Where as always, I am your guide and cheap nut job in these airports. Well, hang on a second. Just who the devil you think you are? I am Dr. Doodle and Chief Nut Jobs in these here parts. So anyway, well here we are, big old number 20. That's right, episode 20. And if you recall way back to 10, back in the Stone Age there, well, in number 10 we did uh, the, the mouse, how to use the mouse. Well, this time we're doing another hunk of hardware, this time the sound card. That's right, yes. And, uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, to all my hardcore old-timer brethren or sistren out there still clanking away on old GW Basic, well, this code, as well as the mouse code, they both work just fine in GW Basic with a little bit of tweaking. So, hey, uh, if you, you are interested in that, drop a note down that thing there, and I will make the code available for, for GWs. Anyway, here we go. Then let's take a look at this thing here. Danger, Will Robinson! Danger, Will Robinson! <laughs> well, at this time, I should point out that uh, while this software will run in DOSBox, it will not read the, the microphone. Now, that, that's not to do with the software. That's just uh, the DOSBox. I actually contacted their engineers, and for whatever reason, they never put the code to read the microphone into DOSBox. I guess they figured no one would ever need it. But in any case, that's why I'm busting out my, my bleeding edge of this beauty here. Bleeding edge, brand new uh, Desk Pro. So new they even finished, haven't even finished building it. Look at that. And of course, we run nothing but the latest, greatest software. We got Windows 2098 there. Nothing but top of the line here. And in all reality, I'm using this guy so they can run QBasic in, in real mode, not DOSBox, because, uh, I mean, if you have another system that you, that runs in real mode, should have no problem. Maybe even another DOS emulator. I don't know about others, but DOSBox will not read the microphone, so I'm using the old laptop here and running in true, or, what well, I guess, uh, native DOS mode, and there you have it. Once this, <laughs> this big list starts up, we'll, we'll see what's going on here. All right, well, in this episode, we're talking about digital audio, of course, and, uh, well, it's a huge topic, lots to cover, so I'll, I'll try to keep moving right along, and on that note, moving right along. All right, well, what I'm about to show you now is a piece of code that I consider my masterpiece. It's an audio editor I've been working on literally for decades, and uh, we'll run this thing, and here we go. It's called QB Sample. If you notice, we got all these buttons up here. We can, let's open a file. What are we going to open here? Oh, more, more, more. Got the magic little more and then back buttons. Yeah, let's see here. Oh, actually, you know, it comes to, occurs to me now. Uh, well, this is actually July 3rd, so happy 4th of July, everybody. Here we go. We'll play this one. July. There you have it. We've got our waveform there, and, uh, and well, it says July, as you heard. But now we want to open a new file. Let's go with, I don't know, 23, uh, actually, 4, 4th July. 4. 4. Okay. Now, but let's see here. Let's record. Okay, we'll click record. And again... If I haven't mentioned already, this is running strictly in DOS, real mode, uh, uh, native DOS, whatever, not DOS box. Now, if you have another DOS emulator, there may not, may or may not work with the, the microphone, but DOS box will not read the microphone. So let's uh, let's come up with a new file. All right, I, I got one for you. Let's call this bald, which which I am becoming bald. So we press any key to begin recording so we click this button or any button really now we're recording our file called bald and uh, how do we go it's him well I looked in the mirror today my eyes just didn't seem so bright I've lost a few more hairs I think I'm I'm going bald I think I'm going bald all right so we're done recording we hit another key to quit and it's going to take about an hour to load here, but this is the waveform that we just recorded. Maybe I'll fast forward through this. Or any button, really. Now we're recording our file called Bald, and uh, how do we go with Sam? Well, I looked in the mirror today. My eyes just didn't seem so bright. I've lost a few more hairs. I think I'm, I'm going bald. I think I'm going bald. All right, so we're done recording. We hit 
All right, there we have it. Sound file that we've just uh, recorded, and uh, I apologize for it. No, I don't apologize for missing a voice. If you're here, you're going to listen to it. But anyway, we don't want all this nonsense beforehand where I'm talking about uh, what we're recording. So what good is an editor if you can't edit your file? So what we'll do, let's just go click on Mark here. And I believe, you notice I'm moving the mouse left and right. I believe right about there is where I start singing. Now I've marked that point and I click, here's left cut. This, this cuts out everything before the mark. That cuts out everything after. So I'll click here, get rid of that. Oh, by the way, 706,000 bytes. Ooh, it's a big one. Now we're working and it's now deleting anything above that, or bef anything before that point there. Anything in front that, gone. And you could probably, and probably uh, fast forward again. So hang on a second. In the mirror today, my eyes just didn't seem so bright. I've lost a few more hairs. I think I'm, I'm going bald. I think I'm going bald. All right, so we're done recording. We uh, whoops, looks like I cut a little bit too much off. Well, no worries, we just click undo. Boom. Or any button, really. Now we're recording our file called Bald and uh, how do we go and sit up? Well, I looked in the mirror today. My eyes just didn't seem so bright. I've lost a few more hairs. I think I'm, I'm going bald. I think I'm going bald. Alright, so without recording, we hit. Okay, let's try this again. So we click on mark, and maybe I think around here, we'll cut this. Cut a little less at a time, just inch up on it. All right, so we've got our, our audio file trimmed down where we want it. Now comes the fun part. We look over here, go to options, boom, and all these fun options. And we can change the field color, the grid color, the trace, and this and that. Preview, preview mode on, you can turn that off so that you can decide whether you want it to play automatically each time it, it reloads. Uh, the size of the grid. But now here's the fun stuff. We can delete the current file if we want to. Maybe it's just a waste. We can rename the current file, but here we go. We can reverse it and even check it out. We can add echo. So we'll click here, bang, working. <laughs> Again, we'll fast forward because this will take some time. Hang on a second. All right, so we have uh, edited our, our file. We just added the, the uh, echo effect. Let's play this, see what it sounds like. Why not in the mirror today? My eyes just didn't seem so bright. I've lost a few more hairs. I think I got I'm going bald. I think I'm going bald. I'm going bald. So there you have it. We can uh, edit a file, trim off the, the, uh, any excess of before or after. Uh, we can add uh, echo, we can reverse the file, um, any number of things. Now, <laughs> of course, we won't be doing anything nearly as sophisticated as this in this video. That The whole reason I'm showing this is to, well, to illustrate what can be done. And, of course, I will, I will include a copy of this, or, or a link to this, I should say, down in the dibbly there, if you want to download and play with it around with it and see what you can do. Uh, now, again, this is for real mode DOS, DOS mode, uh, not DOS box. But uh, if, yeah, if you have an old box that plays through DOS, hey, knock yourself out and have fun with it. Now then, time to get to the, the code. At, well, I've written a program called Radio, which is short for raw audio, Radio. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, as soon as this is done, we'll shut her down and uh, bring up Radio. Hang on one second. Why not in the mirror today? My eyes just didn't seem so bright. I've lost a few more hairs. I think I'm going bald. I think I'm going bald. So there you have it. Now, we've... Uh, <laughs> 
we've edited our file and we're done with ever oh by the way it was from 760 706,000 bytes down to 469 so we've trimmed it down quite a bit there and now we just quit boom and end of program all right well here we are at the the opening screen here we got radio cubasic audio file editor and by the way i call it radio because it's just raw audio no headers or anything like that so so if you're hoping to do 16-bit uh, cd quality you can just forget it uh, but in any case that's not what it's for i wrote this just to record simple sound quick sound clips that let's say game over man or uh, boom yeah and put little sound effects and clips uh, play again in, in your game quick little sound bites so I mean, you can record music with us but you won't want to listen to it so okay we here we are radio cubasic audio file editor editor we got our action menu R for record new file P for play existing file and Q for quit program so let's play an existing file here Let's try Mary for beginners. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. There you heard it. Good old Mary and her little lamb. But now let's record a file here. Uh, R for record. And please enter the file name for recording. Alright, we'll record this one called Testaroonie. So here we go. Enter. Testaroonie. All right, we've recorded our file, and let's play her back. Just a Rudy! Boom, there you have it. Record a clip, play it back, and then Q quits the program. All right, that's about the, all there is to it. <laughs> so we've seen what this turkey does. Let's see how she does it. Here we go. Okay, so we've got QBA 20 dot bass radio by Dr. Doodle, Copy Left 2023. And again, it's radio as in raw, raw audio. It's just raw file. In other words, there's no headers, no information as to uh, how big the file is, whether it's mono, stereo, uh, uh, the, the sample rate, and all that crap. It's just the raw data. And it's always going to be 8 bit mono, so we don't have to worry about what type it is. In any case, uh, so that's why I call it radio. And it, now here we initialize our program. Uh, we set def int a through z. We've seen this many times. Make all the integers default. Declare sub PCM func. Now this subroutine here is the actual subroutine that does the, the hard work uh, interfacing with the sound card. And we'll get to how that works later. But we set width to 80 and 50. Let, let's look at width here. Width, uh, help, width. Boom. Okay, assign an output line width to a device such as a printer or a file and change the number of screen to play display column rows. So width columns rows. <clears throat> this is uh, the whole reason it did this. You can see how big this is. Well, if you remember, we, we, we print files and it's all compacted a little, little tiny bit here. And in other words, I made, set this to, let's see. I set this to 80 columns by 50 row. Uh, 80 rows by 50 columns uh, in order to fit the, the, the files all into there so you can see them all. You don't have to page through, page through. In any case, uh, so we set our width to 80 and then uh, what, 80 rows, 50 columns, and now we set path equals C radio, which by the way, uh, this this here, the, the variable path is set to C slash radio slash. Now that's just to tell QBasic where to find the files you want to play and where to put the, the, cords, the files that you record. Now that of course depends on a, a, a directory or folder in your root drive called C radio. If you don't already have that set up, you, you know how to make directories. Just do that either in DOS or Windows, but make sure you have a, a directory or a folder C radio, and that's what the, the, the directory will be working out of. Now we go color 11, shell exit. What's happening here? Well, we set the color to 11. That's that pukey kind of uh, uh, aqua looking color and then shell and exit what's this well we've shelled in the past and right down here and you can see that the intermediate we can do shell and <clears throat> in this case we're just shell shelling and then exiting so what's this with shell like here boom we can see the windows 98 and well actually it's running dos but in windows 98 we exit here what's the point of that <clears throat> well when let's just do this we'll disable here and run start 
and we play a file. Now, if you notice, we got the, the pukey blue here, and but this is all gray, the, the, just the standard the basic startup color, I guess you'd say. Well, the reason is because we didn't, we disabled that line there. Now, next time, let's say play oh, zero, for example. Zero. And now we play again. This time it is blue because the the code has changed it to well aqua. But uh, let's play uh, say chicken here. What's chicken got for us? Chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog envelope. Chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog envelope. Chicken macaroni, chili where my home is. So there you have it. We'll quit here now. Yeah. So we. We just uh, set the color to 11, then shell, and immediately exit. All that does is just kind of tax that color to the screen so it's all set up before we start. All right, so now we go submenu, and this is our subroutine menu, which, hold on here a second. We come down here. Here's our menu uh, subroutine, and it might look like a lot, but it's really just window, window dressing, print all the, that's the the, uh, the menu. We've seen printing menus, things like that in the past, but we print out radio, now this is again in, the, in that blue color, the aqua color, number three, number 11, excuse me. So it's radio, QBasic audio file editor, uh, action menu, record new file, play existing file, and and quit program, but if you recall, uh, the header, the, all this, the, the RPQ, they're all in in yellow. So here we go, color 14, locate, print, radio, Q basic, boom, in yellow, and then action file in yellow. Now RP and Q, they're yellow to, to highlight them. So all it does is it prints this little box, but the highlights the header, the action menu, all that in yellow, and you're good to start over again. All right, so we've de declared our, our uh, variables, integer, declared our, our sub PCM to record and play the software, set our width and, and width and height, our path, of course that variable is uh, set to C radio, again make sure you have this radio uh, directory or folder in your root directory and you're all set, color 11 shell, exit that just prints the or, or plasters the color on screen and we go sub menu, now we're ready to start. So we go to our main program loop here, do blah blah and then loop, now Normally you have loop while or whatever, but in this case all you can enter is RP and Q and one of them Q is clear screen and system So do we don't need to, to end after the loop the the end of the the exit is right here in the, the loop So we do color 14 locate print the time. Oh, by the way uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I put the time on there because so why not put the time uh, this here's something we haven't uh, Really looked at before this is the time very fact Look at here. I will just help with this here. I love this help function. You can, okay, t the time function returns the, the computer's current system time and time sets the oh, time statement sets the current time if you want to change it. Uh, likewise, there's one called date. Same thing. Instead of the time, it prints the date. But in any case, that's there just to show you can do it. Or maybe you want to find, well, how that file I just recorded, how long was that? You, you print it, uh, da, 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 da. oh, it looks like it was three seconds, five seconds, whatever. I just thought it'd be a cool thing to throw in there, so I did. And now we select case, uppercase in key. So it's waiting for us to press, press a key. Whatever we press, we convert it to uppercase. And if we happen to press R, we go sub record wave. If it's P, we go sub play wave. And as I mentioned, if it's Q, then clear screen and system. Simple as that. Now, it's the subroutines that do the grunt work. So well, let's see here. Uh, we saw a menu and da, 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 record wave here. Okay, <coughs> as I mentioned, we set our path to C radio. And that's where it's going to stuff the files that record. So we set color 11 again. Locate 15.4 input. Please enter the file name for recording. And file name here's our variable we'll be saving. And that is file name. In the past, we've done this. It's a pretty typical uh, technique. Just file name, and that, that's all it is. It's a string variable that holds the name of the file. So if left, uh, lowercase, excuse me, right file name for not equal wave, then file name. What? What is this? Well, this line. It looks at the file name and at the right four characters. In this case, well, if it's not equal to dot wav wave, then file name equals file name plus wave. I don't know if you can see it over here. Yeah, file name equals file name plus wave. So in other words, if you input a, a, a new file you want to record, but you forget to put wave on there, it will just detect that and say, yeah, well, we'll just tack the wave on the end. This way, if you happen to forget, not a problem, and it's 
kind of foolproofing. And we do the same thing with playback, but you'll see that later. So in any case, uh, we, we type in the, 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 the file we want, to, or the, the file name we want to record, and there you have it. Now we open path plus file name, so it's CRADIO plus file name for binary is one. We've now opened the new binary file, or yeah, this one, this case is new because it doesn't exist yet. We're recording it now. Open our new file in binary as number one. We we'll locate and print. Press any key to begin recording and file name. That's the file that we just decided we want to record. Do a loop while in key equals nothing. So it just sits there and waits until you press a key. Now check this out here. We got color 28. What's going on here? Well, if you recall, in screen mode 13, we got 256 different colors we can play with, but in screen 12, or in text mode here, the text mode, screen mode 0, like this, we got only 16 colors that we can print at one time. But what's going on in 28? Well, if you remember earlier, well, I'll, I'll show you here. We'll run and record. We'll call this test. Press any key to begin recording, test wave. Now, if you look, it's blinking. How about that? That's just because I used the color uh, 28. In this case, uh, 28 is the light red, but it's blinking kind of to, to um, simulate like a recording studio where the blinky red light shut the hell up we're recording. Well, there you go. It's to let you know, hey, recording, start squawking. Anyway, press any key to quit, boom. And then audio is saved to, to, to file test out wave. Press any key to return to menu. And we'll play it, play it here just to prove that yes, we did record this. Now, if you look, it's blinking. How about that? Are you hear? It's blinking yellow. In this case, uh, 28 is the light red, but it's blinking. Kind of to, to um, simulate like a recording studio with a blinky red light shut the hell up for recording. Well, there you go. It's to let you know, hey, recording. Start squawking. Anyway, press any key to quit. All right, so now we quit here. Boom. And here we go, like again, the color 28. So basically, uh, the first eight, one through eight will uh, print the the darker colors. What is it? Uh, dark blue, uh, green, cyan or aqua, and then red. And over eight, it starts over with a, a light blue, light green, light red, or that pink color, light aqua, whatever. But if you put color over 16, then we get the blinking the blinking colors as you saw before. I just thought it was a neat trick you might dig. And again, it kind of gets the user's attention. Hey, we're recording. Start recording. So we wait and then we print uh, color 28. We print recording file name and press any key to quit. And now at this point, it starts recording. If, if you notice PCM2, we're calling our sub procedure called PCM function 2 to record. When you're done, we close the file and then color 12 print the same thing at the same spot it's the same color in fact it's just not blinking this this we print it out so it doesn't blink and then the color 11 set it back to the blue the, the aqua and we print out audio save the file file name file name locate here print press any key to return to menu do loop while in key and wait till you press a key once you do it goes sub menu it prints the menu back up on screen we're ready to start over play another record another file play another file whatever and again it's the pcm in this case, PCM2 record. This is what does the heavy lifting. But now let's take a look at, we come down here, and here's Play Wave. This is even easier. Uh, if we hit P, we come to Play Wave, color 11, shell, DIR, path, uh, all wave. No. <clears throat> what is this here? Well, we've seen the, the, the shell command already. We just start a new instance to DOS. Uh, we type DIR here, directory, uh, the path, so that it gives us directory of radio and looks for all uh, asterisk dot wave all wave files which come to think of it that's all that's in there is wave files but anyway we got our switches here slash wide slash sort by name alphabetical and then slash page that keeps it from scrolling all by page by page by page I went to shell instead of files because well hang on a second we'll try files Okay, run here, and view output screen. All right, well, as you see, 
Yeah, this here, this is how the files displays your files on screen. I don't know about you, but that doesn't help me too much. It doesn't even have all the files in there. So I, instead of using the files, which I hate that command. I don't know why they created it the way they did. But instead of using files, we just shell out to DOS. We do the directory and it prints everything nice and compact. That's why we do that. So now we, we uh, re-enable this line here. We shelled the directory and, and uh, the path. And we print all our files up so we can see what files we had to choose from. Now we print, it just prints the line, locate, input, enter file name for playback, and then file name, of course, save that to the file name variable. Now again, like before, if the right four characters are not .wav, not wave, then we just tack that on the end, file name equals file name plus wave. Open path plus file name for binaries one. In this case, we're opening a pre-existing file that we, we recorded earlier. Color 30, this again is the blinky, blinky, blinky. Locate 35 and print now playing path plus file name PCM1. This calls our, our PCM sub procedure and function one to play back a file, which again, that's the workhorse. That's what actually does the recording and playback of files. Once we're done, we uh, close, close the file, color 11, and go sub menu. Now, we've been talking about this. this pre uh, We've been talking about this PCM sub procedure. Let's take a look at what she is. So we view, subs, and PCM. Bang. Okay. Now it looks like a lot of code here, but most of it's really wind window dressing here. Okay, we start out with def int a through z. This sets our variables to integer by default. As usual, speed things up. Now sub PCM func, this just identifies the, the sub procedure, PCM, and the variable that, or the argue that goes in it, in this case the func. Now we've got instructions here. That's just there, so when you want to use this in your own program, kind of give you an idea what's going on here. Now this sub procedure provides direct mode 8-bit monophotic recording. So again, forget your 16-bit stereo uh, CD quality. This is strictly a simple 8-bit, uh, in fact, unsigned 8-bit, meaning no negative, only only positive numbers. Eight unsigned 8-bit monophonic recording and playback services for Creative Lab Sound Blaster or compatible sound cards. It checks the DOS environment for a variable called Blaster and sets the base port address accordingly. If Blaster is not found, the base port is set to 220 hex by default. The routine automatically resets the sound card and sets up necessary port assignments every time you run it. On entry, the speaker is turned on. Audio data is read from or written to a binary file opened as number one. On exit, the speaker is turned off to avoid conflicts with other programs that uh, provide support for sound cards. And the available functions are as follow. Uh, function, our argument function one, playback from file. Function two, record audio to file. Not too tough to figure out. So again, now, now this is strictly direct mode recording as opposed to direct memory access mode. That's where you get your, your stereo 16 bits, your different uh, sample frequencies, etc. Uh, this means that the, the program is directly involved in every uh, reading every sample or playing every sample. In other words, it's you, you the the user tells it hey play this file okay well then we look at that file on the disk we get our first sample we send it out the sound card get the next sample send it out the card sound card get our next sample send out the sound card or in reverse if we're recording we read the sound card card pop one sample to disk we read the sound card put the sample to disk read the sound card one byte at a time to disk Whereas with DMA, that's direct memory access, it's much more complicated. I guess it can be done in Cubase, but it's beyond me. What that's all about, basically, the software tells the sound card, hey, look, sound card, here's your file, here in memory. You just go there, get what, what data you need, and the, the program can, can carry on doing whatever. If, if you want to play background music, for example, you can be doing your game, whatever, and the background is playing your file. Or if you're recording something, the same thing. You tell, okay, now here's what we're going to record. There's the place in memory to put it. Go to it. And the sound card takes care of all the nitty-gritty there, and... Then you can, again, the program can carry on doing what it's doing, and I can just keep waving my hands like this while the thing is recording your, your, your sample. So, again, direct mode only, so we come down here. Let's there. Now we, we set up our ports and reset the sound card. The base port equals to veil, mid, environment, blaster, two, three. What is this? Well, again, as I mentioned, this will look for an environment variable called blaster in your DOS environment. 
and if it finds it, it looks at the second uh, second character, three of them, it should be like, if for example, in our case is 220, it could be set, maybe you have a printer set on on, uh, on channel 220 and this will conflict, conflict with it, so you set your sound card to 222 or 224. If that's the case, then it finds, it looks at the variable, finds out what this number is, and sets the base ports, the read port, command ports accordingly. Now, if the base port equals zero, meaning there is no blaster uh, variable, then by default it sets the base port to hex 220. The reset port is the base port plus 6, read port is base port plus 10, and command port is base port plus 12. So whatever the base port happens to be, you would just add 6, 10, or 12 to set up our reset, read, and command ports. Once our ports are all set up, now we send out the reset port, we send the number 1, and for T equals 1 to 10, A equals input, read port, and next T. So what we're doing, we're sending a 1 to the reset port. We're reading the, the port 10 times just to delay a little bit. Now, out reset port 0, we send a 0 to the reset port. Again, read the inset, input port Read the read port 10 times to delay a bit. This just clears out any data that might be in the registers on the sound card. Now we're reset, ready to go. So a dim sample as string times one. What's that? Well, we're dim is dimension. We're setting a, a variable called sample and it's string. We don't have to put the little dollar sign on there because we're dimensioning it as string right now. But times one, meaning only one byte, one character. So it's not gonna read a whole line. We wanna get just one byte at a time one character, <clears throat> and uh, speed equals 10. You may need to change this, this value uh, depending on how fast or slow your system is, but that just creates a delay And if you need to, to when you're playing back the sound so it doesn't go too fast, doesn't go too slow. Now we select fun case funk, that's our, our variable or our argument we put in here, and if it's case one, we're doing playback. First, uh, out command port NHD1, that's D1 hex, uh, that's the command to turn on the speaker. Next we do, mm -hmm, do all this loop until end of file. So we're playing back the, the file and it opens the file. We do and we loop until we reach the end of the file, then out command HD3, that turns off the speaker and that we go back to the main, uh, main procedure. But if we look here, we got out command one. Okay, turn on speaker, do, get one sample. See, we dimmed here to sample one byte, one character. So we're getting from file one, one byte, one sample. Now out command port 10. This is the actual command that tells the sound card, hey, I'm going to send you a, a sample, a byte. I want you to play that byte. So out command port 10, play this next byte, and out command port, there's the actual sample. Ask you, now this, in this case, uh, it's, it's saved as a character, but we need numbers. So the ask function takes this character, converts it to the ASCII value of it, as like in the, in the ASCII code, we've talked about that. Uh, for example, if <clears throat> the sample happens to be a capital A, well, this ASCII turns it into 65, so it sends the number 65 out to the command port. If it's a capital B, well, that's a 66 in ASCII, so this converts it to 66, sends 66 out to the command port. If it's capital C, etc., whatever the, the sample happens to be, this converts it to a number and send it out to the port so it can be played. Again, we do D for D equals 1 to speed, next D, just to loop as long as we have to to get the speed right. You may need to mess with that. And then loop until the end of file 1. Once we reach the end of the file, uh, out command port D3 to turn off the speaker. And then it just zips down here and select and sub goes back to the main program. Now, if we selected function two and record the file, and then case two, we record our file, we do, we loop while in queue equals nothing. This, as you saw earlier, it just loops until you press a key. So it's recording, recording, recording. So uh, out, uh, we do out command port 20, and there is the function, right, the command, excuse me, right there. Tell the sound card, hey, record this next byte, all right? So sample equals character input port. If you remember, the, the port is numbers. It's going to be from 1 to 128. I'm sorry, 1 to 256. And then input is, we're reading the read port. 
and the character turns that into the ASCII character that uh, that we saved to file. We do that instead of saving three characters like 123, 289, whatever. It's just one character. It's it's a, a letter or number or, or even a pound sign, whatever. It just makes the file smaller because we have to only put one character per byte. We don't have to put commas between the numbers. It just makes the files smaller. So we out command. There's the command to to record or read the next. Uh, the next byte at the microphone, which again in DOS box you're out of luck, but uh, we put in the file one sample that the character we just the, the byte we just read from the microphone goes into file one, and we loop until we press the key. So uh, we go through here, we send the command to read, to read the microphone, get a byte, and then put it to the file. Read the microphone, get the byte, and put it to the file. Read it, get the sample, put it to the file, etc., etc., etc. Once you hit the the in key, any key here. It drops out of the select lex, select and select, and then we end the sub. We go back to the main program. Now, if you understood all of that, you're a better uh, better programmer than I. But in long long story short, this is the code that where the nitty gets gritty. It does all the hard heavy lifting. This is what actually interfaces with the sound card. So when we go to a view subs, boom. All right. Now we can just we call the the sub procedure PCM whatever function we need function 2 to record or function 1 to play that's basically what the, the code does so I guess that's about it for the code and now it's time to look at superiors <laughs> you're gonna love this one it, the, the channel's called the coding train and uh, wow he's got some great stuff so here we go we'll go to superiors we'll come back and button this thing up and, and send you on your way all right here we go all right, well, here we are at the coding train. Uh, you can see here, <laughs> despite the imagery here, it looks maybe a bit kiddish, but uh, trust me, it is not. This this fella, he knows what he's doing. The fellow by the name of Dan Schiffman. Uh, <laughs> I, I found his channel oh, a few months back, and I kind of think of him almost as a kindred spirit because he tries to inject a bit of, of humor into his videos. Let's face it, programming is not always the most interesting uh, topic. So he just met, lights it up and... Uh, there you can see here he's uh, programming the Apple II, so all the way back to Apple IIs and basics and such. Not QBasic, but a, a form of basic. And again, as with other languages, the the, the tech, I'm sorry, the, the concepts are all there. So here he is, he's coding the like Nibbles, a snake game. Again on the Apple II, so we got everything from the old-fashioned look at here 3D on, on an Apple II wireframe. Everything from the old Apple IIs. He does some work on Commodores up to wave function collapse. What's that? Uh, okay, we got here's a coding challenge, a slide puzzle. And then he's doing uh, ASCII text images. That's kind of cool. I love that one too. Oh, just, I mean, everything from simple code, old fashioned, and you, you watch him type line by line. So you see how this is happening in real time. Uh, he does Bezier curves that, like, um, I don't know if you've seen the screensaver, so curves going back and forth and all that. Uh, but he's just got incredible stuff. Everything from the most uh, simple, basic, well, no pun intended, but basic stuff up to, well, physics. He talks about uh, like a spring force, a simple pendulum, harmonic motion. We talked about that a bit in some of our previous videos. Uh, polar coordinates. Uh, I'll have to look into that one. That looks interesting. Angular motion. That's like going around in circles. And again, we've, we've seen that in some of our videos. But he just, wow. He's got everything from, well, coding a bot. That's kind of cool. I'll have to check that one too. Hiding API keys and shape classifies. So this Dan Schiffman's his name, and the, the, it's called the Coding Coding Train. Lots of great stuff. I, again, you will be entertained because, like I say, he likes to make it uh, likes to make it fun. Why not? You know, I mean, if you're gonna do this, it may as well be fun. And I can agree with that completely. You not gotta check out the Coding Train, old Dan Schiffman over there. He uh, he will teach you a lot. He knows what he's talking about. In fact, I think he is a professor of, of programming somewhere. But in any case. This is the coding train and some great videos. You, you got to check it out. You will not be disappointed. Lots to learn and lots of new ideas, things like that. Check it out. You will be happy. So thank you there, Dan, for putting this great page together. And uh, well, I guess that's it. Now we'll head back to our video and button this thing up and get out of here. I'll see you. Bye. Hang on a second.
All right, well, as I have mentioned probably too many times already, uh, well, DOSBox will not read the microphone. Again, just the way it's written, it's nothing to do with, with Cubasic or any other uh, language. So if you happen to be running through DOSBox and uh, if you want to record a file, well, if you have this guy, Audacity, you can record in 8-bit mono, and I'll show you how this is done. So we go Audacity, fire this pig up. Now, we've got our Audacity screen, and I'm assuming you're familiar with it, so we'll just record a simple file here. Let's see. Um, all right, this is 8-bit this is, uh, unsigned data to be used for radio. That's about all I got to say. All right, so here we are. All right, so we'll we'll edit this here. Let's see. I think it's right. All right, this is this is okay. Right here, we'll just edit, cut, and you've seen all this, this stuff is, for. Uh, Eight bit unsigned data to be used for radio. That's about all I got to say. All right, so we'll drag this here, edit, cut, play. Uh, rewind. This is uh, 8 bit unsigned data to be used for radio. Now, we've got our file, we need to save this. So we go to File and then Export, Export as Wave. Now we come down here, it says encoding. It's already set for unsigned 8-bit PCM. That's what you want. You've got all these here, signed. You do not want signed. You want unsigned 8-bit PCM. And you just uh, put in the title, uh, go 8-bit mono. 8-bit mono, there we go, and save. And click OK, boom. So we go to C, code, uh, Cubase Asylum, and where is the audio? There it is. Copy this to, or bring it to Radio. Radio, there we go. Okay, so we've got our file saved. Let's go to QBasic. Escape file open yeah and okay we're up opening radio version 2 this is the DOS box edition so we run this now start and play where is it um, do, 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 do I see it here something should be in here yep there is 8 bit so 8 bit underscore M tilde 1 See what happens here. Well, that didn't sound so good, but let's just do a little something here. We'll quit. You did hear that was the data, so few subs PCM. And this delay, we'll just take the delay out. Where is? Yeah, it's already out there. And now we we've. Uh, Disable the delay there to speed it up a little bit. Also, what we can do is we, we set dim sample instead of string times one, it's string times two. Let's try four, see if that plays any better. Eight bit underscore uh, M to the one. Try that. Here we go. This is uh, 8-bit unsigned data to be used for radio. So, not the best, a little fast, but there you go. You play with it and you can at least get something you'll use for your program. All right, well, I hope that's uh, pretty much covered that. And um, I guess back to the video. Hang on a second, here we go. All right, well, that'll just about do it for our code. But before I forget, Thanks again for watching, and of course, as always, do put your com comments down there, and don't forget to check the, the description for Linky Dinks down to the code. You, there's four files you'll want to download this time. They'll be uh, QBA20.base, that's 
our source code we discussed. Uh, what you've got uh, PCM.sub, that's like an FD template file. If you want to create a new program, you just open that, put whatever code in there, and then save it with the appropriate uh, appropriate name for your program. And then you've got what? Radio 2. Radio 2 is if you, it's like the DOSBox edition, if you have me running through DOSBox, a slightly different timing and a little different syntax with the shell command. Uh, but then finally, oh, QB sample. That's our, the full featured editor I showed at the beginning. So download those, play with them, have fun, and um, yeah, I guess that's all I got for you. If, if you just want to run the code and uh, write some cool co programs, knock yourself out, take off, have a good time. Uh, but if you're like me, again, God help you. Now, if you are a musician like myself, a musician, I haven't played in a while, much to the light of my long-suffering wifey. Or if you're just interested in the physics of audio, how it all works, a, a pitch, uh, frequency, you've got to volume, amplitude, uh, wave shapes, the different tones and things like that. And maybe you've got uh, different sounds all playing at once, uh, two different melodies, harmonies, and everything. You may be wondering, how does the computer keep this all straight? And, uh, well, if you're wondering how digital audio works, stick around. We'll be uh, tackling that in just a moment. And uh, yeah, otherwise, just have a great time with the code and hasta la pizza, baby. But again, if you're interested in uh, digital audio, stick around. Here we go. We're going to check that out. Hang on just a second. All right, well, if you're still here, I'm assuming you're interested in learning how digital audio actually works, uh, how computers or digital recorders deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> You got you, there's frequency, pitch. You've got amplitude, volume, uh, interaction between different different frequencies. How they uh, cancel out and, and reinforce each other. How does it? How do these devices keep all this information straight? Well, the short answer is it doesn't. Think about this a minute. When you're listening to sound, is your eardrum or your ear thinking, well, there's this frequency over here, that frequency amplitude? No, you're just listening. Say somebody plays an A note on a piano over here. Well, that they would strike the key, it vibrates the string at 440 hertz. That's uh, 440 cycles per second, the A note, which vibrates the soundboard on the piano at 440 cycles per second. That, in turn, vibrates the air around you at 440 cycles per second. Again, that A note, which finally vibrates your eardrums at 440 cycles per second. They're going in and out. You can think of your eardrums as basically like microphones. They're just little diaphragms moving in and out. That's all they do, in and out. And they, they move in accordance to the sound that's coming at them. So again, the, 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 the digital device doesn't care about all that crap. All it cares about is amplitude, instantaneous amplitude, volume, how much sound is coming at me at any millisecond, okay? Hang on a second, I got a story for you. All right, so it's time to look in the digital audio, how that all works. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to tell you a little story. Uh, it's about you. You'll love it. It's, it's about you. Uh, but first of all, congratulations, because you, yes, you, you have just been promoted to lead engineer for a company that builds roller coasters. Yes, that's right. And your boss, he has put you in charge of a team to recreate famous roller coasters around the world. You get all the way to Sweden, England, Germany, wherever. They send you around the world to check out these uh, coasters inch by inch, measure them all, everything else. And you got the latest hardware. You got laser spectrometers and dingulators and everything else. So you got all your equipment. You go to these places and you recruit, you, uh, you check out these. Here's a roller coaster right here. Like I just happens to be have one there. And, oh, there's you and your your team down there. Your pals hanging out. So you're you're flying. Well, let's say it's uh, Munich, Germany. There's a roller coaster. So we're flying to, to Munich. Uh oh, looks like customs didn't like your debulator there. Thinks it's uh, some kind of electronical weapon or something. So they've hung it up at uh, customs. Now you're there with your team. You got the task of, of measuring this thing, but you haven't got your tools and everything. So what do we do? We we don't have our electronic debulator. How are we going to measure this thing? Well, you've had a brainstorm. That's why you lead engineer, right? So you look at these. Our, our vertical or wooden uh, supports here, all the struts here. You look at it and you notice they're all evenly spaced. Let's say maybe it's three feet a, a yard a piece, one, two, three, like that. And likewise, the horizontal struts are are evenly spaced as well. Uh, again, maybe three feet a yard, bing, 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 bing. So you think about this way. Well, you say, well, look, here's our first 
our first oh, sample, if you will, our first measurement. And we just, we know that each of these squares is three feet, so we'll just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 what, 20, 25 or so, 25 squares. And maybe a little more than another square, but about half approximately. It's close enough. No one's going to know. If you're riding this ride, you're busy puking, not worried about the, the measurements. So, okay, now we count this up, right there, that's, let's say, 25 units, if you will, squares, blocks, whatever, put down 25. Now we go over one to take our next sample, our next measurement, and also looks like 25 again. For quite a while, it's pretty much flat, it, decreasing a little bit. We can estimate that we'll just call it 25. And then, wait a minute, we're starting to go down here. So we get to this sample right here. Did I move, yeah, I moved the thing, but we get to this sample, and you notice it's a bit smaller, but uh, we just count up again here. Oh, now we're at 24 units, 24, uh, whatever, feet, yards, I guess. Uh, this one here, oh, that's 23 feet now. So we just, we take, we look at each, vertical um, strip here or support we think of that like a sample an individual measurement and we just write down the number 25 25 25 25 20. oh now here's that's a little lower so maybe that's 23 and a half uh i'm sorry 24 and a half that's maybe that's 24 even uh maybe this is uh 23 and it goes down and then here oh was it one two three four five six yeah there's seven seven units right there now we're starting to go back up again just like a roller coaster now, does this shape look familiar at all? Not quite a sine wave, but imagine not IO files. And anything more than just a simple sine wave is going to look like this. It's going to be all crazy. In fact, it's kind of like... Um if you ever looked at a newspaper, <laughs> for all you millennials, yeah, news used to come on an actual paper, printed out, and text and everything. But they'd have images, the local perp, what he, he maybe robbed a bank or something, and there's his image. But if you look closely at it, it's it, almost like a computer screen. It's got, it's not one continuous image, it's a bunch of dots and pixels, things like that. But taken all together, they make up an image. Same idea here. We've got just individual samples or measurements, if you will, sample, 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 sample. And... We don't know the exact, there's a little bit, a little fudge factor here, but it's close enough. This is effectively how digital audio works. So there you see, uh, it has a, a sampling frequency, that 44.1 thousand cycles per second, and it just takes a measurement. Now, 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 what's the amplitude now? What is it now? What is it now? Basically snapshot, another snapshot, snapshot, t at all within milliseconds of each other, and what is the instantaneous volume right now? It takes that measurement, writes it down, takes the next measurement, a millisecond later, writes that down, takes another measurement, millisecond later, writes that down, takes another measurement, millisecond, well, you get the idea. Basically, it gets all these numbers and collects them all in a file, and when you want to hear the sound again, it just looks up those numbers and spits them back out at you. Simple as that. Uh, hopefully, I've made this as clear as I can. Uh, if you, now, if you're interested in learn more about pulse code modulation there are dozens of beautiful uh, videos on youtube check them all out and it spells out the the science and technology of how it all works but again it's just a snapshot 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 and again 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 it just takes a measurement it writes down a number and strings all those numbers together there you go that's all it cares about so hopefully that uh, cleared everything up um i guess i got no more for you Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, this particular video. And uh, until next time, I guess, hasta la pizza, baby.